just want to add here, and please can certainly respond as well, is that we are required as the city, if somebody is um, camping or living on public property, to offer them an alternative before asking them to move along. And that's part of our challenge here, is that we have to develop a comprehensive service strategy. They're on public property. We have to have that in place before we can ask them to leave. That doesn't preclude the police department from enforcing for criminal activity, and that is ongoing. Yeah, just to reiterate on that, uh, like I had said earlier, um, enforcement action is taken in a variety of different forms on a regular basis. What you're not going to see is the arrest of homeless people for being homeless. This isn't a policing problem in and by itself. We cannot solve it by arresting our way to a solution. Uh, that's not the intent of the Santa Rosa Police Department or any law enforcement uh, agency across the state or country in trying to deal with this problem. So the question is, do you have a specific alternative site for the RVs to move to at this time? So we have been uh, talking to several uh, RV parks across the county to assess their eligibility criteria as well as to understand their vacancy rate. We do know with the fires that some of our RV spots have been taken up by people who have moved into those units while their home is being rebuilt. But we have been able to access a couple of different parks that are willing to work with us. It is going to be on an individualized basis because every single person's RV and situation is going to be unique. So that's where we're going to need to work with the individual to help them locate the best spot. Because we also want to understand geographical preference and all of those things to understand what is the best intervention for, for that person. So yes, we have spots identified, but it's not that we're necessarily <coughs> renting out an entire RV camp, right? We're going to be placing people in the areas that best suit them and that they meet the eligibility criteria. So it'll be a, a few spots probably in different camps across the county. If construction is said to be the driver of every economic recovery out of the recession, why are there no building permits issued for any housing units which eventually led to this meeting here at Buffalo? timeline is in several years as everyone knows. There's also this November 6th there's several ballot measures uh, from the state and the city. There's several measures at the state level to provide affordable housing funding and the city council of Santa Rosa agreed to put an affordable housing recovery bond on uh, the ballot. So I would urge you to look at that and to help the pipeline be faster. When, and this is for the these dates, when will the homeless camp be removed? Is the state involved with budget or any other aspect of this issue? Until removed, will the city please help us by making a presence to stop drug use on the streets and needles, people defecating on private property on our ground, and who have been, who have been seen using drugs around children on the street? time is really a function of resource. Uh, we only have a certain number of crews that can come out and perform the work. Uh, they do have other duties aside from doing storm drain cleaning. So we're going to take this opportunity tomorrow to see what the challenges are, to see how long it takes us to clean a certain length of storm drain in this particular area given 
Uh, some of the challenges of the equipment and vehicles that are parked along the side of the street, that may prohibit us from being able to get access in and out of some of the storm, drain, um, storm drains. So um, as needed right now is really a function of we're trying to figure out what the effort is gonna take for us to get this, uh, uh, get this storm drain system clean. Um, when we went and did the Sixth Street work, we were able to perform that in one to two days, depending upon, uh, depending upon the type of debris we were pulling out, uh, but we were pulling out a substantial amount of debris in the storm drain at that location. So in this particular case, tomorrow is going to be an effort for us to see what it's going to look like, and then we'll be able to provide more definition as to how often we're able to come back to do some of those cleanups in an effort to keep ourselves um, compliant with our stormwater permits and make sure that some of those uh, other hazards that may occur um, are limited in scope. With all the free programs, what keeps others from coming out of town here? I think I answered that earlier, but um, again, the data shows that 85% of the people who are uh, entering or experiencing homelessness did live in Sonoma County when they lived here, with 65% living here for 10 years or longer. Um, we do not screen out people who are coming, you know, based on where they're coming from. We're working with individuals who are presenting with vulnerability within our community. And it's, it's really important to understand that homelessness, what it is at the end of the day, is a lack of, of, of the housing that we need. So we're continuing to work towards the housing for the individual and on behalf of our community. But while we're working with that, we have to provide our temporary interventions uh, while we create the pathways out of homelessness and into housing regardless of where a person may or may not have come from. There is not a policy stance right now that precludes somebody, um, but the data does show majority of the people who are experiencing homelessness in our community live in Sonoma County. They are our people, they are our neighbors, and they are here and need help. I just want to add to that, San Rosa is the county seat, so people are coming to our city for a number of reasons, for reasons whether they're experiencing homelessness or not, and as um, Lieutenant Lazarine touched on earlier, communities across California, across the West Coast, across the nation are experiencing um, challenges in addressing unsheltered homelessness. This is not a, a unique problem to San Rosa or San Diego. Is the host group, host group working on mental health group housing for people? There just isn't enough, and landlords won't even rent to them or take advantage, um, and they are subject to substandard housing. I think I get that question. Um, there's a lot in there. Um, so host, uh, we do provide services in coordination with uh, the Behavioral Health Department for the County of Sonoma. We actually have a Behavioral Health Outreach Worker that goes out with us on a weekly basis to work with individuals who are in need of those services. Uh, in terms of, uh, of, of are we creating housing for people with that are experiencing mental health and homelessness uh, issues? We are not housing developers, but we will coordinate with other individuals and other community partners to create that housing. Um, whether they are experiencing homelessness or mental health, um, a health, a mental health need. Um, the majority of people who are experiencing homelessness uh, do have some sort of diagnosis. Um, but I will also say that while mental health does cause homelessness, homelessness does exacerbate and or create mental health issues. So we're working at it from both angles to try to create it from becoming an issue in a person's life. Uh, but in terms of creating the actual housing, that is not necessarily what Catholic Charities does. We will provide the gateway and the navigation into the homes. And once a person is placed, we will then case manage them while they're in the home. So they don't just get placed into a home and then left. Once they're placed in the home, that's when the journey really begins to address the issues that brought them to homelessness in the first place. And that's where our housing stabilization team comes in and works with them on all of the, all of the things that may have um, led to their homelessness in the first place. 